tell me what is the uh, how did you feel when it was offered to you or did you ask for it no not at all i have uh, uh, first of all i've never uh, put a preference for any portfolio throughout my uh, two decades of public service um in any of the portfolios that i've held secondly i do not think that uh, uh it is your domain uh to ask for one uh whether it may be your preference or not mm. it is whatever the leadership decides uh, is right for you where the leadership in its opinion feels mm. that you can do the best justice mm. uh and therefore um for me it was uh, first of all a very exciting portfolio uh, to have for various reasons that we'll probably get into while while we converse through this interview uh, but most importantly it was also a, a very emotional one for me yeah uh, and the reason for that was that my father had held this portfolio um uh, in the early 90s 91 to 93 and um uh, uh for me it was also uh, a challenging portfolio because uh whilst he had held it he had uh, really opened up the skies uh and he had deregulated this industry uh and uh under the prime minister's uh, vision and his uh uh very decisive thinking he was very clear in terms of how he wanted to see uh this sector grow uh, and be most importantly democratized dem- democratized and therefore for me it was uh, a, a great challenge when i when i found out that i had this portfolio for our overseas viewers here's a short primer about jyotiraditya sindhya's father madhav rao sindhya madhav rao sindhya was the civil aviation minister in the cabinet of prime minister narasimha rao In 1992 one of the Indian Airlines aircraft crashed though without any loss of life and Sindhya promptly submitted his resignation which Prime Minister Rao accepted with alacrity Madhav Rao Sindhya died at the age of 56 in a plane crash in Uttar Pradesh all eight people died in the crash at that time he was being seen as the future prime minister candidate of the Congress party Young Jyotiraditya Sindhya was symbolically anointed the head of the family after his father's death. Jyotiraditya's father was the son of the erstwhile ruler of the Gwalior royal family. Jyotiraditya's mother Madhavi Raje Sindhya is the great granddaughter of the former prime minister of Nepal and Maharaja of Kaski and Lamjung, Shamsher Bahadur Rana. So let's let's rewind uh, back to the time when your father passed away what was it like at that moment because you were really young um and uh, your father was seen as uh, you know a prime ministerial candidate even uh, in those years and people saw so much uh, potential in him and here you were this young person uh, he was he was an influential i mean every son is close to his father but for you he was more than just a father he was a hero of sorts tell me a little bit about that period in your life it's a it's a painful period um it's uh not a period that to be very candid with you i like revisiting too often hmm. um i had been away at uh, stanford for 2 years i was pursuing my mba um and my parents had just uh, come for my graduation may of 2001 and uh, whilst i was at stanford I had uh, participated in a uh, a business plan competition um and as it turns out uh, my colleague and I uh with our business plan we had won the competition uh and therefore we were pretty much set on the path of making uh that idea which was on a piece of paper um uh, into reality and it was very early years way beyond this uh, outsourcing mm. uh, business trend that had started in india um uh, i'm i'm talking about uh, 2001 almost 22 years ago and we were looking at uh, really the uh, high end uh, outsourcing uh, high end uh, high value outsourcing um so we were looking at the technology aspect of it and so i came back to india sometime in uh, early mid august of 2001 and we were looking for office space and hiring people and things like that and um within a month and a half of 
me coming back uh, and I was in Bombay. Um, this happened on the 30th of September. And uh, it pretty much changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I then um, got into politics and ran for the first time for parliament in 2002. But you didn't have any political inclination till then? Like, did you I have did, a conversation I, with your dad about about politics? My about father was... Uh, um, Okay, so let me rewind. I was, uh, I was certainly involved in an unofficial capacity with him since uh, the age of thirteen. I first campaigned for him in nineteen eighty four, so I was uh, all of thirteen years old, and I remember that campaign uh, very vividly. Uh, and I campaigned for him in every election since, except the last one, mm. uh, which was in uh, ninety nine, I believe, because I just gone to Stanford, so I wasn't here. Um, so I was very much involved uh, with the region, with with uh, some of his projects and things like that, but in a in a peripheral manner, hmm. uh, not in a direct manner. Um, I I did not have aspirations of of joining politics at that point of time. I was much more focused on setting up a business. Um, uh, but then fate at times, uh, Smitaji deals you some cards and you you have to accept them and take on the challenge at that point of time. But if you ask me 20 years down the road, uh, would I change uh, anything in, in the way uh, uh, fate has, has, has taken me down a different path? And my answer is unequivocally a no, because the... Um, joy that one gets from not necessarily politics and I create a distinction my father always did my grandmother always did create a distinction between politics and public service and Mm. our call in this family is not for politics it is for public service Uh, and I remember uh, him saying once uh, and I've always carried it with me ever since that our laksh kabhi rajniti nahi honi chahiye our laksh janaseva honi chahiye and rajniti keval ek madhyam honi chahiye us laksh ki poorti karne ke liye and so has it been my calling for the last two decades of of public life and therefore if you see my resume or uh, my internal calling is that of a public servant mm. and not a politician you know um, when he passed away when your father passed away there was this very poignant ceremony where you were appointed uh, a kind of a titular head should I say or uh, of the family and here you were a very young person your aunts are there your mother is there and you have your aunts who are much older than you uh, who are blessing you on the other side of the you know I mean your father was in the congress they are in the BJP but at that moment there is something which is uniting you all uh, grief probably and uh, and at that time politics doesn't play what was what was going through your mind at that stage it's, I would say it's a step beyond grief, uh, Smitaji, because um, I lost my grandmother in January of that year. Mm. And within nine months, I lost my father. Um, and so suddenly two generations just left. Um, so it's, be- it's beyond grief. And it, uh, at least for me, it made me... Uh, it made me introspect. It made me slightly philosophical. Mm. And it changed a lot of my worldviews and it changed a lot of the views I had on life. Um, what should be important as opposed to what we think is important. Um, what is permanence and what is temporary. Um, and I think it fundamentally changed in many ways, the person that I was as well. You're very young and you still had this stoic expression. Uh, There was no, uh, you know, there was no outpouring of grief. Uh, You were watching your mother so young, uh, widowed at that stage. I I think, I think more than that, I think it was, to be very candid, I think it was, it was just shock. And also it was internalization and also the fact that you've, You've got to rise to the to the challenge, and you've got to. You're the man of the family now, and you've you've got to be responsible. Hmm. So there's no time for grief, and there's no time to 
wallow in yourself you are now responsible for others and others beyond your immediate family uh a lot of people that look to my father for leadership for resolution um and one feels responsible because at the end of the day for us the family is not the immediate family it mm. is it is the people of the region it is all of uh, gwalior chambal malwa all of that and therefore that that uh, level of responsibility also dawns on you uh, and it's not doesn't dawn on you while you have someone elder in the family uh, be it my father be it my grandmother mm. and suddenly when two generations are gone then uh, it has to dawn on you नमस्कार मैं हूं मानक गुप्ता अगर आपको हमारा ये वीडियो पसंद आया हो तो इसे लाइक और शेयर जरूर करें और हां हमें सब्सक्राइब और फॉलो करना ना भूलें ताकि आप देश और दुनिया की कोई खबर मिस ना करें तो जुड़े रहिए हमारे साथ और देखते रहिए न्यूज 24